In this video, I'll show you how to install R, RStudio, and Radiant on Windows. So first, navigate to the install page. Uh, for example, there's a link to the install page in Grady's Math and Stats Bootcamp. So once you're on the page, uh, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a link here about installing Radiant on Windows. Click the link here where it says R, RStudio, and Radiant and it should ask you if you want to download the Radiant installer. Let's go ahead and click Save. Now in this browser, that is going to go straight to the Downloads folder. So it'll take a minute or two to download, so I'll just pause the video and then come back when the download is complete. Okay, so the download is complete. Uh, this I am in um, Microsoft's default browser and it warns me that this could harm your computer, which is of course not true. So click that X here, and now let's go see if we can find out where the, uh, the download is. So it's in my downloads folder. Let's go ahead and double click that. It takes a second for it to open. There we go. All right, so I'll click on yes to get the process started. And you'll see this pop-up. It says you want to install R, R Studio, Radiant, and so on. So you need all of these. So go ahead and click Next, and then click Install. So it's going to start by extracting a number of files, and then it's going to start the install process for R. So the install process for R is almost complete. And when that's done, it should start on the install for RStudio. You won't see anything happening here. It's just a green bar. Again, it's just installing in the background, so nothing to worry about. Just let it keep going. And so now a, uh, a new window has popped up. This is a, uh, a DOS terminal. Uh, and this is actually running a script uh, that is going to install all the packages that uh, Radiant relies on. So this will take a while. There's a bunch of smaller packages that it's installing. And again, so I'll pause the video until that this part is complete. Again, this takes a little while. It's installing a bunch of different packages. Okay, so that part of the install process is complete. So this is a, uh, a version of uh, LaTeX, if you're familiar with that. It's required to be able to build PDFs in the application. And I'm gonna pause the video until the install here is complete, but this should all just run automatically. Looks like the install for LaTeX, uh, which on Windows is called MakeTech. The application, at least, is almost complete. All right, so now we've installed the zip utility in case you didn't have one, uh, and it's now installing Chrome. Now, you're not technically required to use Chrome, but it's good to have it available if you didn't already. Uh, it's actually the, um, the browser that I would recommend. And so it just popped up this window. And so the final step that, that uh, the installer takes you through is if you so, so choose to change your default browser. So again, what I'd recommend is to scroll down to where it says web browser uh, and check your Chrome. All right, now Microsoft is gonna see if you wanna stick with, um, stick with Microsoft Edge, but I'll just click switch anyway. And so now my default browser is Google Chrome. All right, so I want to restart my computer, just say yes, and we're back, the computer is logging in, and here we're back to Windows. All right, so what should have happened on your computer is that two icons were automatically installed here. We actually don't, oops, we don't actually need either of these. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and move that. This one too. 
but make sure to leave the one that says R Studio. In fact, what I would prefer is that you try and let's see if this works. So we can add it to the taskbar. I think it's even more convenient. And so now just clicking here on the R Studio icon will open up R Studio. All right, so once we're in our studio, there's a, there's a bunch of things you can do with our studio. It's a, it's a great uh, environment in which to write our code. But uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to focus on using Radiant. And so here at the top, you see a drop down called Add Ins. If you click on that, you'll see two options. One is starting Radiant, and the other is to update Radiant to the latest version. Um, you're already on the latest version, so you don't need it now. If for some reason, when you click Add Ins, Nothing is shown. Just click on Browse Add-ins, and then you'll see the options to start and update Radiant. Okay, and then we just click Execute. All right, so we're going to start up Radiant, and so what that will do is it'll actually start up your default browser, which, as you recall, we just changed to Chrome. So here's Chrome, and this is what the Radiant application will look like when it runs in your browser. Okay, so the default data set that's loaded when you start up Radiant is a data set on diamonds, and so you'll see a few uh, few data points and some information about the different variables. Uh, you can see an interactive table. You can use uh, the Visualize tab to create plots and so on. Okay. So here are uh, a couple of histograms and a Navarre plot. And so one thing you can do with these types of plots is you can download them. So here's the download icon, click on that and download. Now by default, what your browser will probably do is again, just download this automatically to your downloads folder, which is not necessarily convenient. And it also doesn't give you an option to set the name for the file you download. So we're gonna change the settings in Chrome. Uh, if you use another browser, it'll have something very similar. So click here, click settings, and in Chrome, this is under advanced settings and downloads. And so I'm actually going to change that, this slider here to the right. And that means that from, from now on, whenever I click on a download button or download something, it'll ask me where I want to download it and what file name I want to assign. So let's try that. Here we're back in Radiant. Let's click on the download button. Now it'll ask me what name do you want to give to the file and where do you want to download it. Now you could put it directly in your downloads folder, or if you wish, you could move it to whatever other, uh, every, any other spot you want. So for example, you want to download it to the desktop, uh, visualize to, and go ahead and save, and then save directly to your, uh, to your desktop. Okay, so let's shut down uh, Radiant. So the way to do that is not just to close your browser, but actually to click the stop button and hit stop. Now let's actually close the browser directly. And there's one setting I want you to change in our studio as well. So click on tools. So we're back in our studio. Click on tools, global options, and where it says here restore our data into workspace at startup. Make sure that it's unchecked. So click on that. And where it says ask here in the next line, say never. Okay, this is going to save you some annoyance going forward. Let's go ahead and click OK. And now you can go ahead and close our studio. All right, we're done with this video.